Hey everybody, welcome to another week. Why are you guys upside down? I'm upside, no, you guys are upside down. I'm right side up. You guys, how are we gonna, this is weird. Okay, sit normal. You guys are, are all crooked. I'm, I, can't, I can't do a full service like this. You're gonna have to, I'm the one that's upside down? Oh, all right. Uh, you know what, I, I think I know why. This month, it's now April, and this month, this whole series is called Upside Down because we're learning how Jesus changed everything. And so let me see if, if we can try and, hold on, hold on. Let me see if we can get this flipped around a little bit. Okay, um, all right, I think we got it. Whew, all right, that looks way better. You guys, whoa, much better. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna play a little game today, and uh, I hope you're into it. Um, before we do, just a couple of quick announcements. Um, just, again, make sure that you're watching the daily devotions, stay up to date on Instagram, and uh, all the things that we're doing here. So uh, we've got plenty of stuff going on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook, and we just wanna make sure that you're a part of it. It's craft time. Uh, Miss Kelly is gonna be have something for your moms uh, coming up on Monday of just like a little Zoom meeting for moms. So if your moms are watching, give them a little nudge and be like, hey mom, you should do that. And if they're not watching, then you should make sure to let them know because uh, we don't want uh, all you guys going stir crazy uh, and, uh, and not being able to have any contact with, with us. So uh, we're gonna also be planning some other cool, fun stuff uh, over the next couple weeks. And uh, next weekend is Easter. So we'll have a special Easter message for you guys. And, and uh, I think everyone will be making an appearance in that. So just make sure you're watching all of that. Okay, so here's the game. The game is called Would You Rather? So, we're gonna go through a couple scenarios and depending on which you like, we are going to move to one side of the room or the other. So, on your TV, wherever you're watching this, on your computer, up will pop up uh, a scenario and then you will move to the right side or to the left side. Does that sound good? Okay, so the first one is would you rather have chocolate ice cream or vanilla ice cream? Okay, so now on your screen, see which way, which side of the move room to uh, move to. Chocolate ice cream, vanilla ice cream. Make your decision now. Okay, I'm gonna move. That's an easy choice for me. I definitely prefer vanilla ice cream to chocolate. I see there's a good number of you who would like chocolate ice cream. You, you wanna come over to my side? Now that you know that I like chocolate? No, you're gonna stay there? Okay, that's fine. All right, let's do number two. Number two, would you rather go on roller coasters or go on water slides? Roller coasters or water slides? Hmm, that's an easy one for me as well. So I'm gonna move over. I'd rather be on water slides. And some of you are probably like, Pastor Steve, don't you love a good roller coaster? I do like roller coasters, but I love water slides more. And if you've ever been to Wisconsin Dells, and you're like, where's Wisconsin Dells? It's like water slide, water parks of America, like biggest water parks, but that's another day, another story. So any of you wanna come and change your mind now? No, okay. Let's try, let's try number three. Number three, waffle fries or tater tots? Waffle fries, tater tots. Waffle fries, tater tots. Ooh, this one is a little harder for me. Hmm, uh, okay. I'm gonna move over here. I'm gonna have the waffle fries. Tater tots are delicious, but a good waffle fry, it just really is the quality of the waffle fry. Good waffle fry is delicious. So I'm gonna go with waffle fries. There are a good number of you over there with the tater tots. You guys wanna come over here? Come over with the rest of us over here on this side? No? 
Okay, we'll stay there. All right, we got one last one. I'll move back to the center. One last one. Would you rather eat hamburgers or hot dogs? Oh, that's really hard for me. Uh, hold on, I gotta ask the judges. Uh, judges, is it a Chicago style hot dog? No, they're just saying ballpark hot dog. Ballpark hot dog. So like when you go to the baseball game, Padres game, that hot dog or a hamburger. So hamburger or hot dog. Well then, okay, make your choice now. Move to the right, the, that side of the room you want to be on. I'm choosing hamburger. I'm choosing hamburger. Yeah. A lot of you are over on the hamburger side with me. Any of you hot dog people, do you, now that you know that there's more people on the side of hamburgers, you want to come over to hot dogs? Now you're going to stay over there? Do any of the hamburger people, you change your mind, you want to go to hot dogs? No? Okay. All right. Back to center. Everyone back to center. So you're like, what does this have to do with anything? This would you rather? Well, you are making selections on what you want. And those are pretty easy because you know what you want. And it's just like, oh, I want a hot dog. I want to go on a water slide. I want vanilla ice cream. And you just make your choice and do it. It's a little bit harder when it's maybe something that you don't want, but you choose it. And uh, it's something that you have to do for somebody else. And that's what we're going to learn in the Bible story today. Uh, but before we get there, let's do some worship. So get on your feet and let's praise Jesus the way we know how.
Before you sit down, let's do memory verse. We got a brand new verse for the month of April. Uh, it's a good one coming from Philippians and it's gonna pop up right here. So uh, let's uh, go through it together. It says, don't do anything only to get ahead. Get it ahead? Don't do it because you are proud, two fists. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourself. Philippians 2, 3, nerve. Okay, one more time. Here we go. Don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourselves. Philippians 2, 3, nerve. All right, now you guys can go be seated and we're going to get into uh, our Bible story for today. All right, guys, are you ready for a little Bible today? I hope so. Uh, grab your Bibles and let's open up to uh, chapter 26 of Matthew. So find that New Testament, flip through. Uh, we're gonna finish there in, in 26. We're gonna kind of skip a couple chapters earlier. Um, but as you guys know, today is Palm Sunday, uh, which makes next weekend, that's right, Easter. Easter weekend is next Sunday, and, and we got some awesome plans for next weekend, so make sure you tune in, make sure you check it out. We're gonna have some fun stuff planned for Easter weekend. Unfortunately, we don't get to spend it with you guys live. We've had some crazy Easter's, um, but we'll try and figure out some way to have some fun uh, this Easter. And uh, so we'll just be in a new way. Uh, so, but yeah, so let's get your Bibles, open up to Matthew chapter 26. Well, we're gonna get back there. So Palm Sunday actually happens like five chapters earlier. So Palm Sunday it happens in Matthew chapter 21 and uh, they talk about Jesus and him going into town, telling his disciples, go get the, the, find the donkey that's tied up and the colt with her, loose them, bring them to me. And, and when all this is done, you know, basically they're fulfilling prophecy. And prophecy, remember, it's like the predictions, but it's not a prediction like a guess. Prophecy is something that is said that is going to come true. And we talked about this a few months back, some of the prophecies that are in the Old Testament, and this is one of them about the coming of Jesus and riding into town. Uh, and it was just like, tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. And so this is, this is all leading up into, you know, just one more thing showing how Jesus is God. And when Jesus was, was talked about all through the Old Testament to be coming and showing that this is all true. And uh, so, as he's going into town, there's the people of town that are waving their branches and saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And people are throwing down their coats and they really thought that this was going to be kind of the, the grand entrance of Jesus that would just catapult him and lead him to becoming king or ruler and that they could just rely on. They definitely didn't think that this was going to be the last week to Jesus then dying on the cross. Now, we know how the story ends, but at the time, they didn't know. And the reason why Jesus ultimately died on the cross was, I mean, he had to die for our sins, but the religious people were mad. The religious people were mad at him because he was doing exactly like our title says, Jesus was flipping everything upside down. He was taking what people were saying of the past, of like how you, you know, how to, to, to honor God and you had to sacrifice animals and you had to, you know, like do all these, you know, rules. And, and Jesus was just saying, you just believe in me and that's it. And that's why that's all we believe now. Like the only thing that we need to do to get to heaven is believe in Jesus. But if we were living at this time, the people would have said, no, that's not how you get to heaven. You got to do all these other things. So it's 
flipped now upside down from where it used to be because now all we have to do is believe in Jesus and our belief in Jesus is what gets us to heaven. And that's something awesome to celebrate. And over this next week, that's what we are going to celebrate. So Palm Sunday, Jesus comes in. Now, the, the, the religious people are getting angry. They're getting mad. They're like, okay, we need to plot against them. And over the next few chapters, and you know, things are starting to happen. And we go into then the Last Supper where they're in the upper room and they're, you know, having bread together and really like the first communion of, you know, Jesus is saying, this is my body, the wine, this is my blood. They share the meal together. Jesus is telling them, you know, I'm not going to be with you guys any longer. And they start, you know, being like, what do you mean? What, what's going on? And, and so from that time, you know, then it's like we get to the point where Jesus tells Peter, hey, you're going to deny me three times. And Peter's like, no way. And then he ends up denying him three times. But that comes later. But so we lead all up into this point where it says in chapter 26, verse 36, it says, Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. So all the disciples go with Jesus and he says, okay, guys, you guys sit here. I'm going to go pray. So, I mean, first of all, I'm going to stop there for a second because you look at how often Jesus goes to pray. Now, Jesus is God. So you would think that Jesus doesn't really need to pray that often. But remember, Jesus is giving us an example how to live our life. He lived our life as a as a part human, fully human, but also fully God to give us kind of that roadmap of like, okay, Jesus lived this way, so this is how we need to live. And so he's like, okay, I'm sit here while I go pray over there. And so he took with him a couple of the disciples. It says he took Peter and he took the two sons of Zebedee. Does anyone know who the two sons of Zebedee are? Guesses? Hmm? I hear some guesses out there. I hear a couple correct answers. James and John. Those are the sons of Zebedee. So Peter, James, and John go with them. It seems like Peter, James, and John are always around. They're always going with them. They're the ones who are always by his side. You know, it's like when all the big things happen, there's Peter, James, and John. And now it says that Jesus was sorrowful. He was upset and deeply distressed, like deeply sad. And he even says to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. And so he's like, hey, guys, I want to pray, but I want you to stay watch with me. Okay, so, so stay and watch with me. Let's uh, see what's going on. So now he went a little farther, being Jesus. Jesus went a little farther. He fell on his face and prayed. And now here's what he prays. Oh, my father... If it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And so Jesus is praying to God the Father and saying, if there's any other way that this can happen without me dying, he knows how what's going to happen. Let it happen. But ultimately, I want your will to happen. And so then he comes back and checks on the disciples. And you know what they were doing? Remember, Jesus told them, guys, hang out with me and watch. You know what the disciples were doing? They were sleeping. They were out cold. They probably were snoring. Like, <sighs> now, I'd like to say like, hey, if Jesus told me, guys, stay awake. I need your help. Pray with me. Watch for me. You know, it's like, I would think that I would stay awake. Disciples, out cold. And so Jesus even like yells at them but he's like what because there's an exclamation point he's like what could you not watch me for watch with me for one hour i mean come on guys one hour is all i asked for can you not give that to me and so he keeps on watch and pray lest you enter into temptation the spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak he's saying your bodies i understand are weak you know, you have a desire, but he's saying, watch and pray with me. And so now Jesus asked them a second time, like, watch and pray with me. And so Jesus, again, is, goes to pray, and he went away, and he prayed the same exact thing. He says, oh, my father, if this cup 
cannot pass away from me unless I drink it. Your will be done. He's saying like, if there's no other way, then fine, I'll do it. But if there's any other way that, that I can forgive all the sins of all the people than dying on the cross, let it happen. But he's like, but ultimately I know your will. And he came and found them. So he came back again a second time and he found them. You know what they were doing? Asleep again! Jesus was like, come on guys, watch him pray. Just like one hour, come on, with me. And then they were out cold again, passed out. <laughs> Sleeping. So he didn't even say anything this time. He said, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them, went away again, and prayed a third time, saying the same words. So Jesus went away and prayed the same thing, the same words, basically saying like, if there's any other way that I can do this, please let it be, God. But ultimately your will. And so now we know that Jesus knows what's going to happen. And we know that Jesus knows because Jesus is God. So he knows that this is what has to happen. So why would he pray three separate times the same exact thing. Now, let me tell you, I think, I mean, just like the rest of it, Jesus is giving it us an example of how to live our lives. Earlier, the disciples had asked Jesus, like, how should I pray? And Jesus said, you should pray this way. And part of that prayer was, your will be done. Not my will, but your will. God's will be done. And even at the end, when Jesus was there and he knew that he was going to have to die on the cross, he's still saying, your will be done. Showing us that even in the most difficult moment, even in the most difficult time that he knew he was going to have to face, he's still praying your will be done. And he's also showing that it's not that this was his choice. This was not something that Jesus really wanted to do. Like it's not, like we go back to the beginning, it's not like choosing chocolate ice cream or vanilla ice cream. Like Jesus' whole purpose was, we know it was to come and die for us, but he's still saying like, hey, if we can do this another way, that would be great. Like, please let that happen, but ultimately your will. And so there's going to be things in our life that we have to deal with. And, and we have to make sure to pray. Like we can pray for what we would like to happen, but ultimately we have to realize that God's will will be done. Because then right after he prays and he says he came to the disciples and said, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of the sinners. Rise, let us get going. See my betrayers at hand. And then this is when Judas comes in, gives Jesus a kiss, and then ultimately the, the, the soldiers come in, take Jesus away, and then this is what leads into him ultimately dying on the cross. And we'll lead into that next week and talk about some of that. But just this, this part that so oftentimes I think we skip over is the fact that Jesus went to pray, prayed like in a way showing us to pray that when we get into the most difficult spots in our life we still need to pray your will be done we might not want to continue to stay on quarantine on staying in our house a stay at home for the next month two months but ultimately we have to trust in god that, and say, your will be done. Like, God, I'd really like to be able to go back out and hang out with my friends next week. But your will be done. God, I'd really like to go back to school before the end of the school year. But your will be done. God, I really pray that I don't get this virus. But your will be done. We have to trust because ultimately, Jesus dying on the cross was not a great thing, but it was a great thing. It's a scary thing to think about in the story of Good Friday. We talk about Jesus dying on the cross, but ultimately, he had to die in order for him to rise from the dead, to show that he was God, to 
to show that he was God, to show that our sins were forgiven, and to ultimately allow us to only believe in Jesus to get to heaven. And that's an amazing thing. And so this week, I really want us to look at how we can apply this to our lives because Jesus saying here like, hey, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. So this goes back to the things that we want. We want chocolate ice cream or maybe we want vanilla ice cream. But how can we actually do something for others? Jesus did this for us. Jesus died on the cross for us. He did these things for us, not for himself. He didn't need to do it for himself. He did it for us. And so I want us to kind of live that same way is how can we live for others? Instead of focusing on what we want, how can we start to focus on living in a way that would be pleasing to others? So I want us to find things that we can do for others. So when we get into a situation, so if we said vanilla or chocolate ice cream tonight, instead of you being like, I want vanilla ice cream, maybe your sister really likes chocolate ice cream. So instead you say, you know what, let's have chocolate ice cream tonight because that's doing something for someone else. You know, maybe you're on the, the playground and next time you're going to play with your friends and, you know, instead of being like, I want to play on the swings, maybe your friends want to play jump rope. And so you say, hey, why don't we play jump rope? Because those little things of looking out for other people, you're making sacrifices. Now, you're not making the same sacrifice that Jesus did of dying on the cross, but he's not asking us to do that. He's asking us to sacrifice some of the things we want for other people. And so I really want us to find ways that we can ultimately make sacrifices for other people. Love people the way that they want to be loved, not the way that we want to love them. I hope that all makes sense. I'm going to have three challenge questions for you that I want you to talk about uh, with your parents. Talk about, you know, this message. But we're going to pray and then we'll do the challenge questions. Sound good? All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for today and we thank you for this message. And Lord, so many times we can just skip over some of the little details in here, but just even in the fact of these last hours that you are still praying your will be done. And so no matter what situation we're going through, whether it's like this on quarantine or whether it's you know, we get sick, that we would pray your will be done. We could still ask for what we want, but we would ultimately pray your will be done. That we would trust in you more than we would trust in ourselves. And Jesus did that to the last moments that he would trust in you more than anything, Lord. And so we just continue to ask you to give us that trust in you. We love you so much and we give it all to you in Jesus' name. And all of God's children said, amen. All right, guys. Uh, Pay attention because upcoming is these three questions that I want you to just talk about with your parents. It's just a good way that you can review this Bible message and open up a conversation with mom and dad about how we can actually start to make changes in our own lives. All right, I look forward to seeing you guys soon and God bless you. Okay, guys, so I'm going to have three questions for you. At the end of each uh, message, we're going to start having three questions. And uh, we'll just kind of have them on the bottom of the screen here so that uh, you can talk through it with your, with your parents. So get a pen, get a piece of paper so that you can write down these questions. And uh, there's no right answer. Well, I guess there are some right answers. But in some of them, it's just no right answers. But how are we going to ultimately change the way that uh, we live our lives? So question number one. And this does have an actual answer. Uh, but what did Jesus pray? What is it that Jesus prayed? And he prayed basically the same thing three times. So what did Jesus pray? That is question number one. Question number two gets to be less of a right or wrong answer. But it's how can Jesus' prayer change our prayers? 
So Jesus went to pray, and he prayed a very specific way in, in Matthew 26. And how can his prayer change our prayers? So when we pray, how should it change what we pray for? Okay, and then question number three is, how can you put others first? So just like Jesus put us first by dying on the cross, I want us to come up with some specific ways that you can put others first. So how can you put others first? Take some time, write out those questions, write those answers, and I would encourage you to talk with your moms and your dads about it and, and maybe go to Matthew 26 and read right through it and see what, what all these questions said because ultimately we want to have a change that people can see. And if we just only watch this and don't do anything with it, we're not going to see that change. But it's when we think about it, when we start to implement it, we put it into the things that we're doing, that's when we'll see the change. And that's ultimately what Jesus wants for our lives, lives is to be able to live more and more like him and trust him with everything. So work on these three questions and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys next week.